Hello gang, we're going to determine if reactions are spontaneous or not by using the Gibbs free energy equation, and here it is in all its glory. And very briefly, before we jump into the exam problems, just a quick recap. If a reaction is spontaneous, then the change in the Gibbs free energy is less than zero, and that's it. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. So let's jump into the exam problems. I'm going to explain everything. So I think that's the most important thing. Okay, so a reaction for which the change in enthalpy and the change in entropy are positive is, and the answers to the question here is, is it either spontaneous or non-spontaneous? And to, to answer this, we first need to look at the Gibbs energy equation. And this is it, it in all its glory. And when this, if we want to know if it's spontaneous or not, then the change in Gibbs energy has to be less than zero. That means this stuff on the right-hand side, the enthalpy change minus T times the change in entropy has to be less than zero as well. And these superscripts, it just means it's under uh, standard state uh, and a stand, st standard pressure of one bar. Okay, so if this is true, then the reaction is spontaneous. If we move this term to the other side, we get the change in enthalpy must be less than temperature times the change in entropy for the reaction to be spontaneous. Now, we have the change in enthalpy is positive, so this is positive, and this, the change in entropy, this is for the system because there's no subscript, is positive as well. Well, is it going to be non-spontaneous at all temperatures? Well, this is the criteria for spontaneity, so this is true as long as the temperature is large, right? If the temperature is super large, then this is greater than this one and the reaction is spontaneous. So it's not non-spontaneous at all temperatures. Is it spontaneous at all temperatures? Well, what if we're at close to absolute zero? Not really, right? Because this is if we have a low enough temperature, then this term won't be greater than this term. So that's not a good one. Spontaneous at high temperatures, this looks good because if the temperature is high enough, temperature can't be negative if we're dealing with Kelvins, then this, if the temperature is high enough, this is always positive, then this can be positive than, than, than this term. We just need a high enough temperature. So this is potentially good, although I like to read all the other ones before I have a final answer. Uh, spontaneous at low temperatures. Okay, well, this is like the other way around. This is not going to work. If the temperature is really low, then this term is very, very low, and it's not going to be greater than this one here. So that's not good. And is it at equilibrium if they're both positive? Well, our requirements for equilibrium is that the standard uh, Gibbs energy change is equal to zero. This is true at equilibrium. Uh, we're not saying it's equal. We're saying we want it to be spontaneous or not. That's going to depend on the temperature, so it's not, at e it's not at equilibrium. Next question. At 25 degrees Celsius, the reaction calcium oxide solid plus carbon dioxide gas is equal... Uh, produces carbon, uh, calcium carbonate solid is spontaneous at high temperatures. And then, oh, so it is spontaneous at 25 degrees Celsius and at high temperatures, it's non-spontaneous, which is incorrect. Okay, so before we look at the answers, let's kind of work through the question. We have Gibbs free energy here, and we're told that at 25 degrees Celsius, it's spontaneous. That means the change in Gibbs energy is negative. And we know that at higher temperatures, I don't know what temperature, but higher temperatures, it's non-spontaneous. So it's non-spontaneous if the change in Gibbs energy is greater than zero. So which is incorrect? Okay, well, let's see, both, actually, before I look at the answers, how, how can this be negative at a lower temperature? If temperature is lower, say, th think like low, how can this be negative? Well, that'll only be negative if the change in enthalpy is negative, if we have a low temperature. Right? Uh, we don't know how low is low, but just think of it as low. Now, if the temperature increases, it becomes positive. Well, if this is negative, then how do we make Gibbs energy positive? Well, this whole, this whole term, this has a minus sign here, but if the entropy change is negative, if the entropy change is negative, this whole term becomes positive. And if the temperature is high enough, then it'll be greater than this term here. This is negative. This term's positive. If this is negative, so negative and negative makes it positive. So if temperature is high enough, then the change in Gibbs energy could be positive. So it looks like we have a negative change in entropy, and it looks like we have a negative 
uh, change in enthalpy. So, oh, <laughs> part A looks good, uh, but let's read the other ones. So the change in Gibbs energy becomes zero at high temperatures. So this is definitely not going to happen because it becomes positive. The reaction speeds up. Definitely not. This has to do this Gibbs energy equation has to do with thermodynamics. Uh, has nothing to do with kinetics. And the entropy change is the main driving force. It's actually not. So what's happening in this reaction is we're producing kind of more order a more orderly system less possible arrangements in space uh, so the entropy is going down and the change in entropy of the universe has to increase for any spontaneous process if this is going down then it's not going to be the driving force the driving force is this this is an exothermic reaction so energy is being released as heat and that's the driving force despite the reduction in entropy okay next exam problem the following graph of the ch uh, change in free energy versus temperature corresponds to. So before before we answer this, uh, we have a y-axis of the change in Gibbs energy and a uh, x-axis of temperature. That was hard to say. And there's a point here where if we're below a certain temperature, Gibbs the change in Gibbs energy is negative. So this is spontaneous here. This kind of this region here, this temperature, and then any temperature above that is going to be non-spontaneous. So we want to know what the signs of the change in enthalpy and change in entropy are. So if we look at the low temperature here, low temperature, Gibbs energy is negative. So if temperature is very low, then this is the only term. This is the, the largest term. And if Gibbs energy is negative, then the enthalpy change has to be negative. So that eliminates, oh, well, I don't know why there's a cross there but it eliminates the enthalpy being greater than zero, okay? And if we have a high temperature, the change in Gibbs energy is positive. Well, this is negative. How do we make this positive? Again, just like last time, if we have a negative change in entropy, both of this becomes positive, and if the change in the temperature is large enough, then this term will be larger than this term, making the, the Gibbs free energy change positive. So we would need a negative entropy change. All right, cool beans. Next one, uh, which statement is correct if the change in Gibbs energy, standard uh, get change in Gibbs energy is less than zero? So the reaction will occur more quickly at 25 degrees Celsius? No, the, uh, the change in Gibbs energy has nothing to do with kinetics. Is the reaction exothermic? That's not necessarily true because the reaction's exothermic only if the change in N P is less than zero, not the Gibbs free energy. The reaction is always spontaneous. Uh, well, that's that's a potential, right? That's a potential. It's spontaneous if the change in Gibbs energy is less than zero. But here we're saying is that always. We don't want to be tripped up on these kind of absolute uh, words, uh, word, uh, yeah, answers here. Um, and the reaction at standard state conditions is not at equilibrium. Hmm. So the Equilibrium means that the Gibbs free energy change is zero, and this superscript means it's under standard state here, a pressure of one bar. So it's definitely not at equilibrium because it's less than zero. It's not always spontaneous because this is only true at one bar, and it's also true only for constant pressure and constant temperature. So this equation here, kind of wrote, wrote over it, this is true for constant pressure and constant temperature uh, uh, conditions. That's how it was derived. I derived this in a previous video, but you need to have constant pressure and constant temperature in order to arrive at this, this result here. So even though this one looks good, it's not always spontaneous. It's only spontaneous under this condition here. So of these four, this is the best one that it's not at equilibrium. Right on, y'all. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you got some value from this, and I hope you get your questions right on your midterms and final exams and quizzes and all of that. Uh, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. All right. Cheers.